I used to do lots of things. I used to do things and I'd say things and Jesus I was evil. Say things and break things and Jesus I was evil. And then I sped away before anyone could see my license plate. Anyway, thanks everyone for coming to this episode of Reckless Newscast. Well, we'll cut, we'll, we'll cut that. Uh, episode, episode 20. Episode 20. Yeah. I'm always one I'm always one episode behind in my brain. Yes, you are. I, I was gonna say like welcome to episode 19. Oh yeah. 20 so, that's a big number. That's a big uh, number for us because that, that is a big number for us. It's the um we're in the 20s now, so you know it's a big deal. And 20s. uh yeah. And, and uh what do you wanna we we got some topics. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did I actually did some uh, not to give anything away, I've shown my post-it notes before, which maybe had two words on them. I actually did some work for this oh, podcast, but yeah. not, to, not to spoil, not to play spoiler here. Yeah, so if you caught that, you could freeze frame it. So mm. let's talk about uh, the poem about drinking urine. Yes, that, that you wrote. Yes, that I wrote uh, under the pseudonym of uh, some other person. No, okay. So this this comes from Joseph Massey, and I, I believe I'm, I'm pronouncing his name correctly. We follow each other on Twitter. He's a um, <laughs> Whatever. He's uh, uh, he, he's a poet, and he got uh, basically um, canceled a while back. Poetry is just gay prose, by the way. Oh, it is. Oh, well, I, I, I this is the first time <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> and musicals are great songs that are arranged in a gay order. But exactly. it's, I mean, so, so anyway, <laughs> so. I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, exactly. No, gay is great. Um, but uh, anyway, Joseph Massey, um, he he wrote he wrote an article, a great article in Quillette a while back, a few years ago, talking about his uh, his, his his cancellation and how the mob went after him. And basically, to sum it up, his worst crime was that he was a jerk to some people. He didn't rape anybody. He didn't murder anybody. He didn't. He was just. I, don't know, I think he was a drug addict or uh, uh, alcohol, whatever. He was a jerk. And uh, but then cool. but. Yeah, but then you know, I think he was in his mid to late thirties now, and and since he got into his thirties, he became religious. He got into rehab, and he's he's sober, and he went back and he apologized to everybody. Um, but the mob is still after him. Um, he's a very talented poet, and every time he publishes, or at least uh, every time he submits a poem to a major publication, mm -hmm. um, they'll accept it, and they'll say, okay, great, it'll be published next month, the next month's issue, or whatever. And then they rescind it. They they're like, oh, sorry, we found out who you were. Um, why? So. Why? Not to cut you off, but why doesn't he just publish under a pen name? Um, because he's he's a badass. Um, yeah, no, I, I get like no. you should get credit for your work, but yeah. he should publish under a pen a different pen name every single time, and then just yeah. keep showing yeah. how hypocritical they are. Right. Once they publish it, say this is me, yeah. and I mean, unless he has some sort of style that would eventually give him away i, I don't right. know that but yeah, yeah. like because there was this poet. i think we talked about this on our first episode this this white poet i, I don't know if he's american or canadian or something and he kept getting rejected mm. and he knew his work was really good yeah. and because it, it had been published so many times before and then it was just this whole new like uh you know don't publish white people right, phase right. and the, so he's published under very like overtly chinese names and was being <laughs> published a bunch like he got yeah. published a lot yeah. and then it came out who he was and they were pissed off at him it's like no i'm proving you that i'm proving that you're just picking based off of identity and not based off the substance and quality of the work so right, anyway right. sorry so so thomas massey um joseph massey um, sorry joseph massey yeah but uh uh from what I understand, he self-publishes. Um, so you know, you, you could just order, you know, his his booklets from from him directly. Um, but anyway, so um, Poetry Magazine, which is one of, if not the biggest, um, poetry magazine, makes sense. Um, a few years ago, I even I even wrote an article about this. They they became extremely woke just a few years ago. Um, they were never political up until a handful of years ago. And um, since then, the quality of their of their poems, believe it or not, has actually gotten really, really bad. Um, so he he published a snippet from 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 a poem, and this poem is not necessarily woke, but it is about some person drinking their own urine. You want to read it? <laughs> I'll, it's not I'll, very I'll, long. Yeah, yeah, it's not very long. It's I'll, it's it's just a few stanzas here, but it's like, uh, but here it is. I steal a plastic cup inside the shower, piss it half full, drink myself down. 
I don't hate the taste like running my tongue along a warm mirror and don't do it just once. My nightly play, my body taking back its golden oil. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. it, it's actually longer. That's just one snippet. But um, yeah, it's just, it stands or whatever. Yeah. But, That's, uh... Uh, <laughs> I mean, isn't that, can you get really sick doing that? <laughs> Probably. I mean, yeah, as far as I know, that's... urine is stuff that your body doesn't want slash need. So, um... yeah. <laughs> well, but I mean, it's funny because like I, I'd heard of around. Poetry Magazine before and they always just seem kind of very stuffy and very classical and blah, blah, blah. And now they're, mm. they're publishing poems about drinking your own piss. <laughs> so, but that's, that's yeah. what happens um, when woke, you know, ideas and infiltrate, you know, the arts. It's like, it's just, you know, we got to be subversive and transgressive. And I'm all for that, but um, well, know, we're going to talk about art. that. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk but, about that. But there's got to be merit. There's got to be art to it. There's got to be a technique. This is just uh-huh. um, being an outsider. And then I want everyone to see how what's much of an a, What's I a am. warm mirror? What does that even mean? That's just like poetry talk. That's why sometimes I can't stand poetry. Like I, I do love some of it. And I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've dabbled. Uh, yeah. It's not my strongest suit. But yeah. like they just put adjectives next to nouns yeah and then make it it's like someone had a funny tweet once it was like poets we get it a lot of things are like other things <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like we understand uh, but i don't know whatever i, I guess uh, it, yeah this this is kind of a trash poem but you know i heard someone recently like uh, unironically refer to themselves as woke i, I thought it that had uh, transcended um uh like a, a genuine term and is yeah. now um <clears throat> and is now uh more of a, a, a satirical term yeah or like yeah. like a like a, pe- a pejorative or whatever you want to call it yeah i've encountered one or two people there was one person i was so before i moved to where where i'm living now i was living in a shared house and there was one dude to his uh, to be fair he was a younger guy he's probably like early 20s and he we were just kind of talking about cultural stuff and he goes, yeah, I guess, you know, like I need to like start thinking more about like privilege and politics and, you know, I, I, I just need to become more woke. And I didn't say yeah. anything. Cause I was like, ah, like it's, it's, I don't want to pick on this kid. <laughs> like that seemed like, yeah. just, like, just like, well, how long like, that was a few years ago, right? Yeah. It was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, it. But it was also sort of like, yeah, but he's young and it's like, I'm sure he only reads, you know the new yorker and uh vox so it's like i'm, I'm not gonna like you know smash on this kid and start being like no like here's i, I am <laughs> i am what's his what, what's his address i'm going to smash on him <laughs> um, uh, but we are oh, going to talk about yeah. kind of shock value that that was going to be the main topic in this episode yeah. like shock yeah. value and uh i don't know you you said weirdos i wouldn't i don't know if i'd say weirdos they can be weird i, yeah. I have a list of people yeah. Uh, I, I think they're fun. Yeah. And I think that they're important to art and culture. Yeah. Because I think it is important to have people uh, pushing boundaries and yes. being out there. And, and sometimes it's for selfish reasons to go, well, at least I, I'm not that. Yeah. Or it, it, it's entertaining and it takes your minds off of things. And I, I'm not saying that the uh, piss drinker poem is yeah. the is the way to go but let's just use an example so as you can tell by my my name this episode binkashi 96 that is a uh, influenced by the rapper at takashi 69 i think he just goes by 69 now he was he's kind of more famous i feel like for his trial where he was arrested and charged with like rico claims uh, or rico charges with a bloods group like the gang the bloods in in new york but like a, a subset of them or something that are like very dangerous yeah. um and he turned state's witness and mm-hmm. uh basically snitched and is in yeah. witness protection i think he still makes music but anyway this he's he was also famous for actually i should say he's probably more famous for his style he had like he's a his name's danny hernandez he's from brooklyn and he has like long rainbow dyed hair and grills that are like also rainbow color and he's covered in tattoos yeah and yet i I thought it was a cool style i think i I, it's wild but i i I saw him i was kind of enamored with him like the first time i saw him now his music not great it's not it's not great music all the songs sound the exact same 
I actually brought up some lyrics here. I, I don't think we can be sued for discussing the lyrics in like an analytical way. No, uh, no. If not, well, whatever. He's in witness protection. So what's he going to do? So, <laughs> um, so, so here's some lyrics from his, his song Gummo, which uh, it, I think it's, that's the first song I heard. It's pretty yeah. popular. I'll just read a few bars here. Uh, <clears throat> I don't fuck with no old hoes, only new hoes. Hold my dick in her backbone. I pass her to my bro. I don't love her. That's a sad hoe. She a bad hoe. I'm a fucker. Then I dash home to the cash hoe. Hmm. So that's what we're working with. And while I, you know, share uh, six nine sentiment concerning hoes, both past and present, um, I don't think you know these are. This isn't uh, the lyrics of I don't know the great rappers of the '90s and the 2000s that we kind of right. grew up with. Right. And it all it's and and also I just read those like a lawyer during deposition, but yeah. um, really they're uh, it, it's kind of yelling them at you. Yeah, uh, and every song sounds the same. But in all the in all the music videos, he's jumping around with his 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 gang friends, and they're in the red with bandanas, and they're in the streets. Every music video looks the exact same, mm-hmm. uh, and they they look like they're having fun. Yeah. And I kind of want to hang out with them, not yeah. in any way that would not in any incriminating sort of way, right. but um, th- it looks like they're having a lot of fun. And I appreciate that because I feel like a lot of art isn't fun anymore. Yes. It, it, it's, it's always just making a statement, which is good, but like, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it crosses over into pandering and just beating over right. the head with it. Right. Um, and I don't know. I, I kind of liked that. Uh, yeah. I, I watched a few, I watched a few videos before, yeah. uh, for the podcast today, they're all yeah. the exact same. They yeah. all sound the exact same, right? Um, but yeah, so I so I just wanted to bring up six nine. I, I thought that he he kind of embodied what I always thought of as someone pushing boundaries and style. Mm-hmm. And uh, now he has a sordid history, uh, a sordid criminal history, right? And not like the fun kind of like yeah. drive by shootings. I mean, like yeah. underage. <laughs> underage girls type stuff which is right, which is right. very not cool so no yes. no you know we're just discussing the artist here we're not condoning any of his past actions right, um, right. do you even know who i'm talking about by the way no oh all right uh next person <laughs> <laughs> well, well i think hold on do, do yourself a favor real quick just uh, google him real quick just type in six nine one word and, and and do images just so you know who i'm talking about I, I don't know. I kind of want Rainbow Grills. I think it would be. Uh, uh, I've seen that guy. I've seen him yeah. around. Yeah, see, you've seen him around. <laughs> <laughs> and what and what kind of music is he? Country, you said. He's, he's a yeah. He's a he's stadium country stadium. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I would so, mind. So, yeah, I, I I'd bring him over for Thanksgiving. Yeah, he seems oh. like a good guy. Yeah. Uh, I also have on here, uh, Nick Cage. Ah, yeah, much more mainstream, but also like one of the, I'd say one of the more out there, but still mainstream actors, both in his, in his roles, like yes. he really takes roles that push boundaries and push his um, uh, range, right? He like his acting range. And I, and I think that's great. I mean, if you saw, did you see Pig? No, my my roommate saw. He said it's really good. Pig's really um, good, and he's very subdued in it for like ninety nine percent of it. Yeah. Um, and it's he does it's, it's a really good movie overall and a good role. It's cool. It's just like it's something different. Did you um, see Mandy? Mandy the movie with Nick Cage. No, what's that? Um, it came out just before that, so probably like a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, it takes place in the early eighties. Nick Cage plays a dude, and his and his wife. They live out in the forest. They live just kind of like a, they live in a cabin away from society. And then, um, and then uh, uh, his wife gets uh, uh, murdered by some weird kind of like Hellraiser gang. It's it's weird. It's kind of like like an action horror movie, like revenge thriller, crime thriller, horror movie. It's weird because like the, this weird oh. biker gang. They're kind of Hellraisery. Like there's there's something somewhat supernatural about them, but it's not super explicit. But it's like the have, movie like, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah. Like the like Cenobites? Kind, of like, kind of, yeah, exactly. They're, they're, like there okay. is kind of like this weird Cenobite biker gang type of thing going on. That seems pretty sweet. Yeah. Um. And so anyway, his his wife is killed, and her name is Mandy. And so he just goes on this crazy revenge. Um, spree. Yeah. It's funny because at the first, at the beginning of the movie, he's just like, you know, he's got this old hippie wife, and they live out in the woods. Or okay, whatever. He's just a regular dude. Um. And his wife gets killed, so he hits up some like an old buddy of his, 
to to to, cr to create this crazy fucking heavy metal uh, axe, the uh, Sith like thing. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna go out and just like decapitate this whole biker gang. So yeah. like, um, it's played yeah. very seriously, but it's very over the top, and he's perfect for it. It's a very heavy metal role. Um, yeah. and, and even even the soundtrack is just like thick, chunky, heavy guitars. That's um, cool. and it's just him decapitating. It's early eighties. Um, the movie takes place in the early eighties. Oh, yeah, the, the movie came, came out, out like, like just two or three years ago, I think. Really? Yeah, it's called Mandy. I don't know, I haven't heard about this. I'm it was an indie I'm film, but uh, it's got uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that sounds like Death Sentence. Remember Death Sentence? I mean, the plot is exactly the other than the Cenobite, Cenobite biker gang. It's exactly yeah. the same as any other revenge thriller thing. Yeah, a dude's wife gets killed, and he goes after the gang that killed her. Um, but yeah. uh, uh, um, it, I, I, I love it because it had this very lurid cinematography. There's a lot of like pink and purple lights, so it just has like, this really gross mm. highlights, you know, uh, cinematography. Um, so it just has like this really like gross, grimy look to it. Um, but it's cool. It's a fun movie, and but I love, you know, like you said, it's just like Nick Cage. It'll be like the most ridiculous role imaginable, and he'll just throw himself into it. It's like, okay, but, it's that's yeah. What like, what about. other actors really do that? Where yeah, yeah. he doesn't have to make movies like that at all, right? Right. And he does because I think he just likes it. Like he just enjoys these kind of indie crazy roles, yes. and he gets to show a range if if he wants. I don't know what what's he like in that. Is he? I'm sure he's wild, right? Yeah, he's pretty wild. Um, yeah. he starts off as a normal dude, but then he gets crazy. Um, which is fun, yeah. it's fun to watch. Yeah, um, you know, seeing like a normal dude getting pushed to his limits and then uh, start decapitating people. So it's it's a fun, it's a fun progression to see. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's fun because he's he's a, he he won an Oscar for leaving Las Vegas, so it's like he's he has sort of like the mainstream prestige. What, yeah, that movie to me was such a disappointment. I haven't seen it. Is it Okay, so yeah, I, I watched it. I think last year, and yeah. it's because it's. I mean, it's because it's not enough. Nick Cage, right? He they he. It starts out. There's this amazing scene where he's. Do, do you know the plot of it? Yeah, yeah. Like he's trying to drink himself to death, and he's yeah. like quits his job. He's trying to drink himself. To, I, I forget why. Um, he's a raging alcoholic. He goes to Las Vegas, and there's like this scene in the beginning where he's in the car and it's in slow motion. And he's just like screaming, but it's silent. Maybe there's music, but but like you can't hear a scream. It's like a really well done shot. It's really early in the movie, and I had my I guess my expectations so high, mm. and then the movie kind of just devolves to the girl he meets, uh, who's a prostitute, and it's like taking like take it, taking care of him. Yeah, and like I don't care. I don't care about her side of the yeah. story. Like this is Nick Cage. What are you doing? And. It, right. it doesn't even turn to like a 50 50 split by the end of the movie it's just like about her uh, and he's just like lying in bed being an alcoholic <laughs> so it's like I, I don't know i guess i guess that like there's a and there's also another scene in the in the beginning where he's like hitting on a bank teller and a girl in a bar and i thought that was like oh my god this is what the whole movie's gonna be just yeah. him being ridiculous and drunk and fun and crazy yeah and it's not and like some of it's like her talking to I don't know, someone, a therapist or a friend. I'm not even sure. Yeah. Like talking about him. It's like, I don't know. It, it, it was just disappointing for, for that reason, because I, I think the, the beginning was so good. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Alcoholism was not more entertaining for you, Ben. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Bummer. <laughs> yeah, Nick Cage, thank you for being uh, a weirdo. Well, he's acting. Yeah, it's yeah. not a documentary. He's acting. Right, right. And yeah, so... Yes, I, I I don't know. I was just trying to think of people and th that kind of embody the like a lot of. I, I guess another one kind of comes to mind is like Jared Leto. I, I, oh Jared yeah. Leto, he yeah. he has a bad rep. I think he has a. I so I like him a lot actually. Mm. I think he's extremely talented. I like his band or I like his band Thirty Seconds to Mars. Like I think mm. they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I know he's super weird. Um, one of my favorite stories, kind of sidebar story, is like. <laughs> early covid uh, uh, allegedly he was like in the desert with a bunch of people where he was like a messiah type person mm. huh and, and they like didn't know that there was covid <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like of course like jared leto would start a cult in the desert and not realize there's covid for like two months or something <laughs> like that i forget exactly what it was it was very no. funny no he did weird shit i know like suicide squad and stuff but i, I think he's great i, I mm. he does 
out there roles. You won an Oscar for yep. Dallas Buyers Club, right? That's right. Uh, yeah. Playing, uh, and it looks like he's going to win another Oscar for the new Spider-Man spinoff Morbius film. Uh, that I think that's his, will be his best performance ever. Uh, you're being you're being sarcastic, aren't you? <laughs> you <are. laughs> Isn't he a vampire in that? Yeah, is Morbius a vampire. Yes, he is. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Uh, hey, that's I, I range. Really like, this. not too many people can yeah, play a living, you know. Yeah, it's range. Day. But I lo- like. I mean, comparing him to Nick Cage, like Nick Cage isn't in a Marvel movie. If anything, he's in a movie that is in a Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider's not a Marvel movie. Yeah, but it? yeah. it's not an MCU movie. But it's it's Marvel. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, not okay. Fine. But you know what I'm saying. I mean, he's in yeah. Kick Ass, which is sweet. Which kind of it was like a early. Uh, anti-superhero type movie like they actually don't have any powers but yeah. but anyway my, my point is Jared Leto is cool and I like him and yeah. I think it's a bad rap and I think we need people like him yeah. uh, to make movies and music and, and art and here's the thing I think that in Suicide Squad he would have played if he'd have been given a good script and a good director he played he probably could have played an amazing Joker um well that, that movie damn, well that movie sucked un, that movie's unwatchable yeah, it's really, it is, really it is, a, it is a terrible movie. I yeah. I think I turned it off, actually. It's one of my yeah. few, like, DNFs I did not finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it, is, it is a bad... I remember watching it, and I'm like, this just feels like... like I remember they're walking down the street in whatever yep. city they're in, and it's all, like, destroyed, right? Like, there's yes. some creatures, and they're, like, having conversations over here, and these two were fighting over here, and these two were having a conversation. I'm like... This is so not cohesive and disjointed. Right. And then when I watch one, I'm like, this is a bad movie. I heard he got cut out a lot of that, actually, though. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I actually liked him and I liked his Joker. His Joker got a bad rap. I thought it was fun. It was a Jared Leto Joker, which is different than a. Uh, um, oh, fuck. Hugh. No, I always forget his name. Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. Dark Knight. Well, what's his <laughs> oh, name? Uh, uh, the guy who died. Um, yes. Well, I uh, always, I always want to say like Hugh, Hugh Jackman. I obviously know it's not Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Uh, uh, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. That's yes. it. Yes. Heath Ledger. Heath Jackman. Or or, or, um, or Joaquin Phoenix. Or yeah. No. You know, so all, I was actually be... very excited when I saw that Jared Leto was going to play the Joker. I was like, okay, that's a cool, that's a cool style because yeah, because it, it seems like like each cinematic version of the Joker kind of um uh takes like like a different aspect of the joke from the comics but kind of runs with it so like the the, mm. the jack nicholson one is sort of like a 1930s gangster i was like, okay all right that's that's cool that's yeah. interesting and then like the um the heath ledger one was more of like a domestic terrorist joker i was like all right okay this is cool and yeah. then so when i saw jared Leto, i was like oh okay more of a like an underground rock star version of the joker i was like, okay cool i did not care yeah. for his performance but again I think he would have been great. I think he would have been one of the best Jokers, but I just I, the direction and it was it just it was just it was not a very good movie for him to be in. Um, Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix like a more mentally like like an escape mental patient type of Joker. Yeah, so it was like the gritty, yeah, yeah gritty, yeah. more realistic Joker. I do not blame Jared Leto for for um, uh, not being in a great. Uh, no, Joker. no, he, he was on the highlight. I mean, the highlights were that and. Uh, the Harley Quinn outfit that all the girls wore for Halloween night. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the truth that came out of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a great outfit, but uh-huh, yeah. a terrible movie. Oh, yes. I cannot. Uh, I cannot do her accent. Yeah, I can't handle it. I don't. I don't care how hot. Because she's Australian. Movie. No, her accent in the movie. Oh, they not just, Australian. Yeah. Oh, they used to be Australianist. Like no, I, we all know I don't like the Australians, but yeah. the it's like some over the top New Yorkish accent yeah, yeah, that yeah. is just grating. Like it is yeah. ear is nails on chalkboard for me. I don't know. Does she does she have in Birds of Prey? I'm sure, it was a pretty good movie. I, I haven't seen Birds of Prey. I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah. So I can't speak. But uh, yeah, she she had it. So that that accent came from the cartoon, the animated series from the nineties. Yeah, it is brutal. Um, but uh, well. She's Australian, so I guess. Yeah, know, but she doesn't. This is it's not the Australian accent, which should be illegal. Uh, I know, but I mean, if, she, I, if it was like if it was like a United States again doing that accent, it probably would have worked all right. But because the also because because she was from Australia, yeah. it probably made it worse. I think. Probably. I mean, yeah. I think we should invade Australia for yeah. and, and be welcomed as liberators. I I would much rather invade Australia than Iran because it's going to be or Ukraine. It's going to be right. one of those three. Yes. All right. 
yeah and i i think we should invade australia oh. and and implement i mean they're 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 familiar with democracy we right. speak the same language like there's not gonna be the cultural barriers there we can really kind of set up a a colonial state yeah. in, in that section of the world which would be closer to china yeah yeah i mean they're not well they're not going to do anything they don't have any guns they gave them all back to the government like, boomerangs, they're, 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 they do a boom, they do a boomerangs yeah, we boomerangs have to count for the boomerangs and boomerangs and mad max they might stick yeah. them on us mad max <laughs> i don't know I, i'm gonna start a petition that we should invade australia i'll okay. write my local congressman and i'll i'll create some phony accounts to sign it so you got my that's, what we, that's, that's what we do best. Some burners. <laughs> I love. I love a new burner. Yeah. Give me any. Give me any excuse to make a burner account, and I'm in. Oh, I, I should. I should just make a burner account. That's like all I do is tweet about invading Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's its sole purpose. Um, I saw this funny. I mean, it's not about Australia, but it's about Australia's parents, uh, the UK, uh, England, and it was like uh, you know top ten things to do in England, and it's like number one, leave. <laughs> <laughs> i like england i, I think england, i think england's cool i think uh but i think we should invade them too i'm no. okay with invading them also but i yeah. think australia it's australia, an old lady we, in a castle come on yeah yeah they're not gonna take us either well yeah. we're fine yeah no. um we should and what about new zealand i don't really care they can they can stay yeah, I'm fine with them just letting, just like, all right, fine, you guys can keep your hobbit. They have, rug, they have good rugby. They have good rugby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could just take was trade out the black shirts for the red, white, and blue. Oh, Let's yeah. Do it. Got a pretty PM. All right. So glad, all right. glad we worked that out. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, hey, speaking of freaks and weirdos and people that we need, um, guess whose birthday is today? It's David Lynch's birthday. Oh God damn it! All right, and what, <laughs> go ahead. Talk. I know you love David Lynch. Let's, let's talk. Let's well, talk about David Lynch. So I, I think one of the only things I don't like about David Lynch is that he did not write and direct Under the Silver Lake. I think that's kind of like one of his only flaws. But other than that, I think everything else. Who is the director for Under the Silver Lake? Uh, oh, you know, uh, he's. Uh, I forgot his name, but he. he he's, you know what he his did, name is your favorite movie. I you think it's the director's name. David Gordon M- Mitchell. I think I want to say. All right. David Gordon Green. Well, I've Rick look at it. Rick, can you? Oh, it's not. It's up? not. That's not who it is. <laughs> anyway. That's not who it is. Um, have, well, have, have Rick look it up. Um, yeah, Rick, can you? Rick, you there? Yeah. Can you? Oh, it's David Robert Mitchell. I knew it was a three namer. Um, anyway. <laughs> three. Um, no, but uh, 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 David Lynch. It's his birthday today and um happy birthday david lynch thank you did you read the weather yes so he's kind of la's officially unofficial weatherman and so you gotta you gotta see him on fridays he, he really freaks out on fridays <laughs> i just like i i just like how happy it makes you that's yes. just the kind of podcast host i am yeah, i oh, like thanks, that I, I feel like that it makes just like under the silver like i like it makes you happy Thanks, man. It's a shame that I got to cut you from the team, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, you're making it harder for me. But uh, no, okay. So um, I, I highly recommend to to watch David Lynch when announce that it's Friday because he freaks out. He goes, he gets so every day. Um, he'll be like, oh, so today is you know December 27th, and today I'm thinking about, and he'll think of like just a random thing. It'll be like today I'm thinking about the Beatles hit song "I Want to Hold Your Hand." I was 16 mm-hmm. years old when that song came out. Anyway, today is going to be 73 degrees, and I hope you have a great day. And um, But on Fridays, though, he always starts off by saying, and if you can believe it, it's a Friday once again. But sometimes, like, he'll do that for – he'll extend the you for a really long time. It's I quite know. adorable. I heard it. You showed me yeah. when I was there on a Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, see? <laughs> but uh, um, he actually lives only 20 minutes away, so I might stop by his place later tonight and freak him out a little bit. Where does he live? Uh, let's near not, no. let's, let's talk David Lynch on the podcast. <laughs> it's it's so, shut down. <laughs> uh, I won't give it the exact address. I, I did look it up. Um, you have his exact address? Uh, somewhere? Okay, yeah, do not say that. Do I'm not, not going to say it. I'm going to say but I will say it's near Mulholland Drive. Okay, it's very close to Mulholland Drive. It's like a pretty big street, right? It is. It's very long and windy. But it's also – so they, they also filmed – did you ever see Lost Highway with Dave with, – um, No, it's on my list though. It it's really a good is. one. So, yeah. is, so is Mulholland Drive. The movie yeah. Mulholland Drive's on that list. Yeah. Waiting for um, Moonfrey. 
uh, it with uh, Bill Bill Pullman. And uh, anyway, but the, the house where Bill Pullman's character lives that's that's David Lynch's house. It's a very L.A. Oh, really? house. Yeah, yeah, they shot it there. Um, but anyway, he's a freak. He's a weirdo. Um, Why is David? I mean, he's made some like what are you referring to, like Twin Peaks? Yeah, he did Twin Peaks. Yeah, no, but just in real life, he's he's interesting because he's um he's weird and he's got um okay, all right. But seriously though, like one thing I do admire a lot about him that I, I that I think you know art and pop culture needs more of is that he'll come up with bizarre, weird ideas and then he'll just go for it. But there's no real it's, it, it's like a quiet bravado he's not doing it to make a statement he'll just be like yeah this is how it should be like a man should wake up and then there's a fish flying around his head and uh, next thing you know he's in outer space and that, that's what's wrong with that so it's like i love that he just does it it's like he Did doesn't you just give describe a, a real thing or you just make that no, up no i'm just making that up oh gotcha, um, gotcha. but uh, uh he'll just go to like weird and bizarre places and be like yeah that's how it's supposed to be right why would you question that yeah what 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 are your favorite movies Lisa? um Mulholland Drive is great. Um, oh, I he love... did Mulholland Drive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did he do Lost um, Highway? Yes. Oh, okay. I gotcha. I yeah. gotcha. Uh, Twin Peaks was great. The movie was great too. Fire, Lo uh, Fire Walk with Me, I think it was called. Um, that was a really good one. But it's a really dark, real grimy movie. Um, Eraserhead. I love Eraserhead. That's been a big influence okay. on me. So yeah, Blue Velvet's wonderful. But I still haven't seen The Elephant what Man is... or okay. Dune. Oh, that's yes, he did do the eighties Dune. Yeah, eighties yeah. Dune is wild. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's charming. I think for yeah. what it is, I know yeah. it's a very polarizing movie. Now that I think we have the Villeneuve Dune, I think that Dune actually is more appreciated because it's it's like it's different. Yeah, and this the this Dune is more of like the official dune yeah yeah and that one is the 80s version yeah of yeah. what dune of what dune would be yeah, does that make sense yeah 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 I, if you if you watch like the um the the scene where uh a tree like paul is fighting i forget that that's his trainer's name yeah yeah right as yeah. like the shields are like big block cubes in the, yeah in the, well, you, in the, you, you watch that here uh we were yes, the VFX artists yes. react yeah they're comparing right. the two we did and yeah. we're, the effects were really state of the art for the time for the time yeah yeah for yeah. the time they were really state of the art that's cool well good for him yeah i i like the um one thing i did like more in the in the david lynch dune is the baron Har harkonnen Mm. I, I was going to say Harkonnen because that's the way yeah. I like to say it. Yeah. But Baron Har I am going to say Baron Harkonnen, I think is more fun in that one. He's like, he's more disgusting. Yeah. And yeah. that's how I envisioned him uh, when I read the book. And I like that. Um, real quick, speaking of Dune, uh, mm. that that filmmaker. By the way, we did it. We did a whole episode on Dune. You should, yeah. you should go listen to. It's called yeah. Dune Speak. If you know, it's good for you. I deleted it from our our library. Um, All right. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll we'll cut that. Um, ah, who's that filmmaker? <laughs> There's a crazy experimental filmmaker was going to make a Dune movie back in the '70s, and it had a crazy cast. Um, okay, give me one second. Okay, he directed that movie, um, uh, Holy Mountain. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Holy moly. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm almost there. I'm going to pull up his name. What's his fucking name? Alejandro, Alejandro Jodorowsky. He was going to direct okay. yeah. a Dune movie back yes. in the 70s. Did we watch this at your house too when I was there? No. No. Uh, uh, but, but there's not, a documentary not the movie, on it. something about it. Yeah. Uh, we might have watched a trailer or something for it. Um, but there's a, because there's a documentary about it. Um, I think it's on Amazon. Well, who's going to be in it? Uh, I'm bringing up that cast real quick because it was a wild, crazy cast. Uh, um, okay, I do an unreleased film. Okay. Should I get Pretended rid of Here it is. I got it. I got it. So he wanted Salvador Dali to play Shaddam, the, uh, the Padish uh, Emperor. Yeah. Um, Orson Welles to play the Harkonnen guy. Harkonnen guy. Yeah, I can see that. Um, <laughs> Mick Jagger as Fade Routha. Um, oh, oh and then God. he wanted to get Pink Floyd to do the soundtrack. Um, did, what did Pink Floyd do the soundtrack to? Uh, that movie, The Wall. <laughs> no, I thought it did something more more popular. 
No. Um, they, there was one movie in the late 60s, some weird British movie that they did the soundtrack for. But oh. um, right. uh, David Carradine as Duke Leto Atreides, uh, Gloria nice. Swanson as Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mo. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, there were a few other people, but, but who's going to be that's... Paul? Paul, Paul, Paul. I thought I thought it was Mick Jagger who was going to play Paul Atreides, but you know. I want this movie to be made. They should make this movie now. Well, yeah. Dave Carradine's killed himself jerking off, but uh, they should make it anyway. <laughs> Replace Carradine with, yeah. with, with someone else. And oh, I think it was his son. It was his son, Bronson Stradarowski, who was going to play Paul. Mm, um, so, 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 so anything. Uh, anyway, um, uh, in the documentary about the un, unreleased version, this un, unmade version of Dune, mm. um, uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky, uh, he was talking about how he went to see David Lynch's Dune, and he was shattered. Like he didn't want to see it because, like, no, like I spent years prepping this movie and it never got made. But finally, he went to go see it, and he goes, "I was so thrilled because it sucked. It was shit." And he goes, "But like the reason why I was I was thrilled not because it's because you know I, I love David Lynch and I knew that when I watched this movie, I was like, this is not David Lynch's vision. The studio got involved. I'm glad that David that, that like." Um, yeah, you know that, that, that Richard that, his movie exactly. Yeah, he goes yeah. no. David Lynch is a true artist. If he'd have, if they'd have left him alone, that he would have made a masterpiece. But the studio got involved. I'm glad it was shit. That way, like, no, like there will never be a good version of Dune. Of course, this was years ago. Um, but uh, uh, it's definitely a uh, uh, check of the documentary. Um, we should do that. Might, you know what we should do an episode of? Zach. We should do an episode of like director's cuts versus uh, whatever you call a, a standard cut or like what a like a main like. But they put theatrical, release, like theatrical right? Yeah, yeah theatrical yeah. release. Yeah. yeah, like because usually I always recommend to watch the director's cut. Yes, and, and uh, when you have the option, usually yeah. they're longer. Yes. But I've noticed that they're almost always better. Yes, and if that's the case, why don't they just make that the theatrical release? Right, right. Well, maybe because not everyone shares my tastes, and they're like, "Well, a two and a half hour movie doesn't sell like a two hour movie or yeah. whatever." But that's not what we're in it for, babe. I know. Learn it for the art. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I understand where studios are coming from because because it's like, well, if a movie's shorter, that means theaters can play it more times per day, and then we can get more money out of that. But uh, um, yeah, I know it's. Um, I mean, like, I mean, that's I, probably I, like one one part of it. But yeah, yeah. I I always recommend doing the director's cut. Yeah, I can't I can't think of uh, of a film that I watched where I thought the director's cut was worse than the theatrical cut. Mm -hmm. um, James Cameron's Aliens is better. That's what I was do. I was just thinking that it's so yeah. good. Yeah, the yeah. movie is so good. Yeah, um, really good. Oh yeah, <laughs> how good? Really fucking good. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, I, I still didn't like it that much, but it was still better than uh, than Joss Whedon's. Yeah, it was like four hours long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's a good example. Was it? I haven't seen either. Uh, yeah. I don't even know what Justice League is. Is that Marvel or DC? That's DC. DC. Yeah. That's DC. Uh, that was better. That, that's wild, though. Like four. It was literally four hours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was better than the original. Yes. Theatrical release, I should say. Yeah, yeah. Well, Joss Whedon's in a bunch of hot water right now. Or uh, yeah, uh, what did he do? I saw his name come. I, I don't care enough. But yeah, um, you can talk so, about it. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up real quick. Uh, anyway, so might. he's a male feminist, which should tip you off right off the bat that uh, he's a sleaze bag towards women, and he's been objectifying and treating women like shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. um, red flag. Red, know, red flag. Exactly. Straight male guys feminist. who call themselves feminists are yeah. going to be uh, beta male predators. I think God Sad refers to that as sneaky fucker syndrome. Uh, whenever like like uh, a, a man calls himself I mean a that's 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 what fucking promising young woman is. Is yeah. like promising young woman. I really appreciate I really like this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't do the like juice head bro kind of um or or like you know typical like gangster biker type yeah, misogynist, yeah. which there are plenty of. Sure. Uh they, they literally do like the beta male predators, what I call them. It, it's yeah. if you look at the actors, it's like uh is it Adam Chris Brody? Uh, Adam uh, Brody's in like the first scene. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mince Pla Mint Plas Plaza yeah. Plaza. Yeah. I forget his name. And of course, um, Bo Burnham. Like these are yeah. not big juiced up guys full of yeah. rage who are just like grabbing women by the pussy. They're yeah. Yeah. but they're like doctors and in intellectuals and stuff. But they're all just scumbags. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure they all are all very progressive and liberal in their politics. Yeah. And yeah. 
I didn't appreciate the cheap shot at David Foster was because they make uh, uh, Mince Plaza's character like talking about one of his essays, and that's a cheap shot. David Foster oh. was awesome, yeah. but um, yeah. Anyway, that's so. Yeah, Josh, Josh, Josh Wing could have been on that. He, he, yeah. he, he might have directed it. I don't even know. <laughs> he could really one of the main guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, over the last year or so, um, he's gotten in some trouble of like uh, female cast members from like all, all the way from like his Buffy days. Um, saying like, oh, I he literally was don't know what he's done. I know the name. I don't. Joss Whedon. He's he's kind of like the nerd. He was like a nerd god for a long time. He yeah. was like he, so he did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, both both the original movie and the TV show Firefly, the Doctor mm. Sing Along Horrible Man or whatever Doctor Horrible Sing Along garbage I bullshit. I don't I don't I don't follow musical crap. Um, and then he directed the the first two Avengers movies. Um, okay, Avengers, right? I, yeah. I, I always there's like a handful of these directors who they're all in DC and Marvel stuff, and I just can't because yeah. I don't know their other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And because I feel like it's just not really what I watch a lot of. But so, so what's he accused of? Um, as far as I know, he has not committed a crime, but he's there's just like this long hit track yeah. record of like treating women like shit, like female cast members of shit. Yeah. Um, which is made even worse considering that he's always considered himself a feminist and he's course, spoken at feminist course. rallies and stuff. My shirt that was like, this is what a feminist looks like. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pussy a few hat. years ago, his, his uh, wife divorced him and published an open letter talking about how he's cheated on her a bunch of times. Anyway, the reason I bring it up now is because he, um, he got interviewed for New York magazine, I think. And uh, like this is the first time he's been talking about this for a year. Yeah. Um. And uh, he doesn't apologize. He, he he'll just be kind of like, yeah, sure, I cheated. Yeah, I was kind of a jerk. I guess I could have been a little bit more of a gentleman, but still, I'm a feminist, and you know, and this is so. Um. Well, so, so, well what he, the fuck's he, a fem? Like, what is a feminist? Yeah. I, like, honestly, like, what's yeah. what's a feminist? Is it if it's someone who believes that men are women and men are equal? Like, yeah, of course, that's like pretty much everyone. Maybe besides know, yeah. like some fundamentalist religious people, right? Like, right. but like any term now, yeah. It, it, the the definitions changed. Racism, racist yeah. has changed. Misogynist has changed. All this stuff. Yeah. A Republican has changed. Democrat has changed. Like I mean, there you have a little register. Liberal, conservative. These things yeah. have all yeah. changed. So that's why, like, all these terms are dumb. So if you to like say you're a feminist, you're just like asking to be picked apart. Right. Right. So you shouldn't even identify as anything. Yeah. Yeah. Except for a lizard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or an Australian. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know who they are because they have the terrible accents. When we do invade Australia, yeah. I'm I'm a bene I'm a benevolent dictator. Oh, so okay. this whole plan of mine I have is that I will be uh installed as the dictator of Australia. And it's kind of my okay. little fiefdom. Think yeah. um Leopold and Bel like King Leopold in Belgium, but without the racist stuff. Right, uh, right. Because they're because they're Australian and mostly right. white. Um yeah. but uh the, yeah, that, that's my whole plan. Is that I get installed, have my little like uh, kingdom in, 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 okay. this, in this country. That's so cool. help me out, help me out with that. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah. Oh, so I was gonna say, <laughs> but they have to change the one thing that they have to do is they have to change their accents. Yeah. yeah oh, oh, will... oh, so it's, it's against the law to, to talk like an Australian. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have to take. They have to take. They have to relearn English, basically. Right. Right. Pro proper or American they can just. English. They can just sing all the time because, like, like ninety nine percent of the time, whenever an Australian artist sings, like the the accent goes away and then becomes like real proper American. Yeah, they English. trick you. Yeah, they yeah. trick you. Well, that's the thing. What was what that from? Where? I mean, it's not every singer, but like tons of British singers, they don't yeah. sing in a British accent. Right. Didn't that come from the Beatles. I'm not sure. If there is some kind of like weird phonetic phenomenon that goes on there's only been a handful yeah. of people uh i can't remember the guy's name but he had that song sex and drugs and rock and roll uh where he he has like yeah. a very cockney accent where like sex and drugs and rock and roll are very oh yeah, yeah. Gay. um but well, some, that, like, some like punk music they sing in the yeah, uh, yeah. What's called? singing in the in the british accent or whatever but the yeah like english adele accent. they they all sing in neutral kind of standard american english yeah, yeah. Canadian, true american. the true english, north, as far as I'm north american english right yeah, yeah, yeah where it comes from real english yeah, yeah. yes real english <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway uh so just just we what, kind of, what kind of name is i was always josh it's joss joss what is and he joss? changed it um it's a bastardized chinese word for luck i believe and I'm not making that up. That's what uh, he said. Um, uh, his real name is Joseph. His real name is Joseph, but he changed uh, it in college. God, I hate him so much more now <laughs> yeah. than anything that you've said so far. Treat him like shit. That's not a big deal. Uh, like, change your name to Josh. Pillory him. Pillory him in the central square. <laughs> I just, uh. 
<laughs> off with his head. <laughs> Better not be in my kingdom in Australia. I'm yeah, yeah. death penalty's coming back. Oh yeah. Okay. Cool. You change him to Joss <laughs> to a douchebag. Yeah. So so it's not that's not like a com that's not like a name. No, no. Oh, good. So I'm not even offending anyone. No. Because no. there's no one else named Joss. What no. was it what was it Joss Stone a singer, a, a female singer? Oh. Well, apologies to Joss Stone. I'm sure she was fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm um, sure that's her real name too. So he changed yeah. his name for to Chinese. Yeah, to a Chinese word from Black He's a white guy, right? Just like fully white. I mean, he's like, like neon white. He's like, like neon white. Like you can see right a... through. You can see right <laughs> through. <laughs> he's like not even there. <laughs> um the reason I brought this up is because uh the Justice League thing um so what's her face yeah. the, the israeli girl who plays wonder woman um yeah Gal Gadot. yeah um so she she called him out not too long ago because i guess he, he like threatened her like sort of like um if you don't do what i tell you you're not gonna work in this town again sort of thing and um i guess you know warner brothers came in and there was some minor disciplinary action and so he was he was talking about that incident in this article and he goes Gal Gadot, English is not her first language. So what I said jokingly was that she wanted to change the scene. And I said, well, if you're, if you're going to change that scene, you're going to have to tie me down to a train tracks and do it over my dead body. And she thought I was saying that about her. But English isn't her first act, isn't her first uh, language. So, yeah, it's her fault. Yeah. And it's sort of like, instead of saying, like, oh, I'm sorry, that was a joke that went too far. It's like, no, no, it's just your English is broken. <laughs> like, yeah. but, it's just like, but the whole almost oh, the whole article, whenever the interviewer brings up something bad that he did, it was always sort of like, oh, yeah, that was a that was a dumb thing. I could have had a yeah, little, a little a bit better. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. He, he so he's he, it's not like a, <clears throat> a me too thing, it's just that he's a dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He didn't Cosby well, anybody. He didn't uh, Harvey Weinstein anybody. But uh, yeah, he was right. Just, right. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, Sunit O'Connor. That's. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, that had her on my list. Yeah. Uh, by the way, she is a a Muslim now. So there's that. Ah. Yeah. Uh, inshallah for Sunit Shanid O'Connor. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce Irish names. They're very confusing. I don't like it either. They yeah. it'll be like. Sayorsi, it's like no, it's Shorsha. I'm like, oh. what? Oh. No, yeah. learn English. Yeah, I, I've I, I've sat in a pub in Ireland once, and the guy was just talking to me. Yeah, and yeah, I'd been drinking, sure, but uh, you know, when in Rome, and yeah. I just stared at him, and I went, I have no idea what the fuck you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no idea what you're saying to me right now. <laughs> but I guess it's not technically their first language, but like it kind of is. I don't know. They were cool. They were I, I, the Irish culture is very cool and. Yeah, yeah, they have a cool history, and um, I, I think the Gaelic Irish language is coming back. Mm. But uh, until then, learn how to speak English, please. Yeah, learn, learn, like, learn, you, you can see, you can say you're allowed to say speak English to white people, like yeah. that's cool. Like, I can, t I can walk up to a Polish person, and be like, hey, learn English, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe not. I don't know, but if you do it to like an Indian person or my, like, what if I went to you? I was like, Joe, speak English, yeah, yeah, learn English, yeah, no, that'd be very deeply offensive. Because you're Mexican. Yeah, I'm super dark. I'm very colored. You're white, white Hispanic. Dude, white Hispanic's <laughs> making a comeback. Oh, yeah. I'm calling it. Because you know why? Because polls are showing that this whole fucking Democrats are so stupid. This yeah, whole like yeah. Democrat. I'm going to go into political rant real quick. Okay. Sidebar. You can, yeah. uh, do I have permission? Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Democrats, this whole like demographics or destiny shit. It's like, no, we'll just wait it out till there's less white people and then we'll win every yeah. election ever. It's like, no, yeah. polls are showing that Latinos... Latino men, like there was a, um, what's it called? Uh, like a very basic, like Trump versus Biden. If that was the matchup, like today, who do you vote for? Trump won a fucking majority of Latino men in these yeah. polls. A majority. And yeah, for yeah. women, and then total, it's like almost a 50-50 split. The women is like offsets that to make it almost at 50. So that's, it's, it's like 45 or 40% women, which is crazy. So because of that, uh, I, I foresee white Hispanic becoming yeah. a, a uh, regular term because, you know, the ma medium won't just be able to criticize Latinos yeah, or Hispanics, yeah. but like, it'll be like, oh, well, white Hispanics. Yeah. yeah. Which is it like, don't get me wrong. It is a thing. Like these, these Central American and South American countries are very diverse. People don't realize that. Same with Caribbean countries, like extremely diverse. Yeah. It's just that now it's politic. It's, it's politically advantageous to separate 
you know, like yes. an indigenous uh, person from Mexico and a, a lighter, more European background person right. from Mexico for years and years were just Mexican. But right. now, like, and a good example, that's Roma. Roma is a good example of the more white Mexican wealthier people and their help who are the darker. But anyway, so it's always existed. But now where it's advantageous for the the, the left to make these distinctions, you're yes. going to start seeing it a lot more now. Right. I mean, we already saw it a couple of years, uh, not um, yeah, a couple of years ago. Holy shit, 2020, yeah. Yeah. Um, summer 2020. There was like a shoot. I think it was in LA or somewhere in California, where it's mm -hmm. like white Hispanic officer shoots like unarmed. It's like, oh, you fucking lie! Like we knew this was coming. Yeah. We knew yeah. this was coming. I like, right, right. never would have said that even a year earlier than that. Right, right. Or or, or, or do the uh, Nicole Hannah Jones thing where she's like, yeah, maybe this conservative black person is black, but they're not politically black. Oh, that was my favorite. Like, oh, I, I love, I love that. I think she or deleted just, that. Yeah, yeah, I think she did uh, too. But it's just, I, I responded. I said, I'm uh, politically Brazilian, but with a, like a <laughs> Lebanese background. <laughs> That's what I want to be. Well, like Shakira, like a, like a like a politic, you know, a politically South American, but with like a Middle Eastern. Because a lot of Middle Easterners in um, Central yeah. South America, people don't realize. Yeah, yeah. Learn something new every day on this podcast. So Shanita O'Connor is Muslim yes. and Irish, oh. and she is probably most famous for ripping up a photograph of the Pope uh, as a Catholic, very not cool, but uh, ripping up a photograph of the Pope on SNL in 1992, oh. uh, which was, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, I, I oh, actually okay. do. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was very shocking. Like she didn't tell anyone. Uh, I, I, was, I was just reading about it for this episode and like the, and the vice president of NBC like shot out of his chair apparently. Cause I think it was originally supposed to be a picture of like a refugee child. I don't know mm -hmm. from where, yeah, um, yeah. but like, a, like somewhere in Africa, but like a refugee yeah. child, and she sang a song that's supposed to be about racism, a Bob Marley song cover, and she turned into like child abuse and, and put up a picture of Pope John Paul II, who was like a pretty beloved pope. Like as as far as popes go, like a lot of non-Catholics really loved this man. He, he was yeah. a, he was a really great guy for. I mean, the cover up of the child diddling and rape like that's not cool but um, right. besides that besides that <laughs> she was kind of, i don't know how much he knew he probably knew all of it i don't know it's, a, it's an institution it's corrupt and really disturbing um which is why I, yeah well we won't go into all that but yeah, yeah. uh that is a was a very live uh, shocking moment which we don't see a lot of anymore right in something like snl which has just become the what i call the affirmation clap show yeah, it's not yeah. funny so much as it's just agreeable to the like neo lib, ostensibly progressive, uh, urban uh, viewer or like yeah, a yeah. wine mom suburban, and then like the white collar viewer, where there's a skit and it's not funny. It's just oh, you're saying the thing that I like to yeah. hear and see on TV. Right. So I'm right. gonna I'm gonna clap for it like a seal. Yeah, SNL uh, kind of sucks. A lot these days. It's a shame because it's, I, I think it's special for, I mean, it's live, which is very cool. Like there's so little of that that's on TV and it, so many great people and ideas have come out of it. Yeah. And it's a shame. To say, it's like, it's pretty unwatchable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I remember it was, uh, what year did Joker come out? Was that 2019? That was a, are you talking about the skit with, um, the white male rage, white male rage. Yeah, it was, it was, oh, it was no, like a weekend not, update thing. Oh, and, no, uh, not that yeah. one. The, there was a pretty funny, the guy from Stranger Things, right? Who plays I Hopper. Think, yeah, that yeah. was a funny skit where he's like kind of making fun of, I think pretty accurately, just the, how everything needs a gritty remake. Oh, okay. So he's Oscar the Grouch, but he's like, oh, it's like a yeah, gritty remake of Oscar yeah. Just like, if everyone's gonna call me trash and right, like, right. Uh, why don't I just become trash? And yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. he's like a garbage man, like snaps That's out right. his partner. It's yeah. like, gee, Oscar, man, you can be such a grouch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, so it was, um, it was like a weekend, uh, 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 the weekend update thing, and uh, uh, they were just talking about like uh, uh, movies that had come out that that year that were big hits or something like that, and like, yeah. um. And then, you know, some stupid actress on the show, she would do like this dumb song called White Male Rage because almost every movie that was big that year, 
I guess involved a white male who was angry. So like the Joker came out and it's like, oh, it's about an angry white man. It's like, oh, here's a war movie that came out. It's about an angry white man. Oh, here's a revenge thriller that came out. Oh, it's about an angry. And so she kept doing the stupid song over and over again. It was a stupid song, but like exactly what you said, people weren't clapping because it was funny. It was sort of like, oh, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, white man. You're yeah, saying, all right. You're the opinion that I agree with. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. I hate to see it. Yeah, I know. And especially like, uh, you know, for the longest time, SNL was was pretty uh, well. I, I wouldn't say for the longest time. Like like, it, 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 there's always been like ups and downs with SNL. Like it seemed like in the '70s it was pretty edgy for its time, and then in the '80s it was kind of bland. And then the early '90s um, they, they they got their edge back, and then they and then at the end of the '90s they they kind of fell off. And then the early 2000s they were good. And so it's yeah. weird. It seems like every five or six years they kind of go into a slump, and then they come back, and they go into a slump, and they come back. Yeah, early 2000s I think is what I associate the most with was that that was because that was like will ferrell, will ferrell and tina yeah. Fey and amy poehler i know they were like more late 2000s too yeah i love the one with the, <laughs> the like like rudy giuliani like see that's the thing they would never have like rudy giuliani on now right. they wouldn't even have like a, a chris christie like chris christie was on an episode yeah after yeah. um after sandy yeah and like they wouldn't do that now i don't think they, and they had a, that other republican guy um his daughter, uh, he's died. He died, but his daughter was on the View for a long. Uh, McCain, he was on SNL oh, for a couple. For John a McCain was on SNL. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think like the thing yeah. with, with the presidents, like they're not the presidents, the the candidates, mm. but like they, they didn't have Trump, they didn't have Trump on, <laughs> which would have been fucking hysterical. Like, yeah. listen, I can't stand Donald Trump. I think he's yeah. a terrible president. Right. I will not. I've never voted for him. I will not vote for him if he right. runs in twenty twenty four. Um, but he's an entertainer. He's yeah. entertaining. He's hella and funny. He's so funny. It's so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't like that for the president, but he's yeah. fucking hysterical. I follow like, him on Twitter because I didn't support him, but he was just funny. He was. He tweeted out the craziest shit. He was. He was calling people horse face and like. Yeah. I mean, it was too much. Yeah. I just same with. I mean, Obama. I, I wish kind of Obama became an actor instead of yeah. a president. He sucked yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, they're all war criminals who should be in prison, but I'm right, not going right. to go into that right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just like, Trump would be so funny. I think if SNL really wanted to, because some group like CNN and stuff, supposedly they're like an the NBA, they realize that wokeism and all the social justice shit is a loser. Like it's right, not, right. it's not winning anyone. It's yeah. maybe affirming a small group of people who already like it, but they're not gaining any viewers if anything they're alienating people yeah. so they're they're saying they're going to totally switch yeah, like yeah. and be, they're not going to do all the political stuff they're not going to do all of these things cnn's going to go back to more news now i'll see i'll believe it when i see it but if snl really wanted to because i don't think snl's doing great nah, they nah. you know what they would have done uh they would have had donald trump on to do an alec baldwin impression yeah I was just that would have been yeah. that would have been so funny and like yeah. i think it would have been so ridiculous and even make it kind of a surprise like that would have been shocking and, and i think it would have confused would, everybody because it would, yes, it would, it would be like confused people would have gotten people to tune in yeah and exactly, maybe watch yeah. next week like what are they gonna do next week yeah, like it's okay yeah. like uh, this is crazy to me and that would have been so like snl might be yeah. back right they probably right. go back to the same neolib bullshit the next week but right right like, that would have like, been it would confuse amazing. the woke people because like, they're like okay well, i love snl but now they have trump on i don't know how to feel about this and then you then like like the hardcore conservatives be like i hate snl but they have trump on i don't know how to feel about conservatives, it like, that would have been so conservatives great. are so starved for mainstream culture that yeah. any like any just the the smallest just twig of an olive branch yeah, they yeah. gobble up they love it yeah. because there's so little mainstream shit for them yeah now yeah. that you would have gained a a, a flood of new viewers yeah. probably for the next however many weeks and if you just kind of leveled it out a little yeah, like yeah. they kind of had a, a skit with tom hanks that was pretty funny where tom hanks is playing it. yeah maga like a maga guy yeah. on the black is it what, Jeopardy. Black Jeopardy? Yeah, yeah, Black Jeopardy. It was really funny. It, it, it was making a, actually a really good point that yeah. I agree with. It was that a lot of MAGA people actually have very similar values and views as as Black people in America. Like, they just do. And it's yeah. the the elitist corporatists that separate them. They they and, and one side, the white working class went to the right and the left and, and the Black working class went to the left, even though neither side actually gives a shit about them. Right. And they were showing that. They both are... 
more religious and they're more, more traditional family yeah, yeah and traditional and, and and skeptical of things like i've always said the black people didn't trust the government before it was cool like yeah, yeah. like and they did um, a sketch similar to that not too long ago it was sort of like um god i'm gonna butcher it so bad but it was something like um uh, 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 are you Democrat or are you Republican? And it was, and it, it, it would take, it, it was a game show. I don't know if it was Jeopardy, but it, it was a game show format. And then they would ask contestants like, oh, so is this person a Democrat or? Wait, is this a, SNL? It was SNL, yeah. Um, really? So they have a person and they, they would say, make a statement. And like, it was hard to tell. It's like, oh, well, I, I can't tell if you're left or right wing. So, so somebody would come out and be like, okay, um, uh, uh, I love Dave Chappelle. And they're like, oh, Dave Chappelle before 2015? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes, exactly that. Like if you, like the, the right wing is so starved for this that like yeah. someone could have, it, they're actually kind of almost like yin and yang in a way. Yeah. I, I don't know if, this, let, let me go, let me kind of think this out on, yeah. on air here on, uh, in the moment. Like the left wing is so, you can have 99% views that agree with us, but the second you step out of line, we reject you. Where the right wing, so much of it is, you can have 99% of views that disagree with us, but if you agree with us on like one thing, like you question Fauci or you say right. something about like, they will accept you. Yes. And they'll be like, you can have your views. We are, and to be honest, that's won over a ton of fucking people. Yes. Like this, this uh, ostracizing of people this moral purity is a loser, like it is a losing strategy. And that's why the right, so many people who still don't even consider themselves right wing yeah. or even centrist, they're like left of center. Yeah. They have been accepted by the right because yeah. it's like, we agree with your free speech. We don't agree with everything you say, but we agree with your free speech. Yeah. We agree yeah. with, you know, your right to express yourself and, and other things that it's like, we don't have that moral, moral purity over here to an extent. Now they have their own, the right wing has their own um, contradictions and their own hypocrites sure, sure. too, of course. Yeah, yeah. But it, I don't think it's nearly as profound in terms of culture. They're like almost exact opposites. Yes. Yeah. I just saw that on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. That was beautiful, man. I'm going to cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll cut that. Rick, Rick, cut that out, please. Um, yeah. No, absolutely, man. Um, but uh, uh, I want to I want to bring up something. I know I know I didn't bring this up with you, but uh, uh, I want to bring it up just because it, it is related to to stuff. To Shanine um, O'Connor. Yes, exactly. What well, is related actually to, 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 to rock and roll music? Um, so uh, um, this was a New York Times article that came out. Maybe no no no. It was NPR. So NPR used to be great uh, until a few years ago, but now they're NPR like, used to be great. Oh wait, have you? Hold on, I do Do you know what we should do? What episode? We should do the NPR drinking game, where <laughs> where you start a podcast, you do a shot no. every time they mention like systematic racism, yeah, or uh, yeah. privilege or whatever, and we'll be wasted within three minutes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I've heard. I, I I stopped listening to them a while back, even before this woke stuff really started taking over. But but I've heard from other people where it's like. They'll be talking about something that that is not related to race, but they'll find a way to make it about race. They'll be talking about I, the economy. It's yeah. like, oh, it's not racially equi equitable. It's like I tried, I tried like during the height of all of the craziness, right? And I think yeah. we're on the uh the the downward of the bell curve here. Yeah. Yeah. But at the height of it, I was like, all right, let's see what you know, let's look at some other perspective. Let's hear some yeah. shit. I tried to listen to one of those podcasts. I don't know which one it was, I don't remember. Yeah. Literally, the first one of the few first sentences was like oh, well, you agree that like systematic racism exists in all of these areas, right? And it was like, yeah, it was like, okay, moving on. There's like no debate. There is no nuance. It's just like, right, we right. all agree that this exists in, in these contexts. Let's move on. I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. Like, no, yeah. I have 10 questions already. Right, right. Yeah, it's absolutely absurd. Um, but anyway, the, the article that I want to bring up real quick is um, this, it, um, the title of the article was, it was something like, when did we just accept that a rock band was four white dudes? Oh yeah. Wait, this was NPR. This is NPR. This is NPR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we never uh, did because there's been tons of rock bands that are not that at all. Exactly. I didn't read this article. I'm trying not to click on this shit to be honest. I read the article, so I'll, I'll, I know, I'll summarize I know some of the worst. I know you did because, it. I, because, <laughs> because we happen to follow each other on Twitter, so exactly. I know that you did. <laughs> I was like, you know, I thought this, I'm like, I'm gonna let Joe handle this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and right, it's because like right off the top of my head, he, like I tweeted about it, like right off the top of my head, I listened to like a dozen non-white male rock artists who are, who are awesome. It's like, like nobody says Jimi Hendrix was a great guitarist for a black man. It's like, no, he was a great guitarist. Like, that's yeah. it. 
Janis Joplin like, was a great singer the for best? a woman. It's like, no, she like, was great. Like, why, yeah. why, why, why is this? Even? But anyway, um, so the whole article is really stupid. It's really long. But there's one thing about it in particular that really pissed me off as a lifelong musician. She invented a term that I had never heard. And I even asked my roommates who were musicians and I asked a few other people who were musicians. Yeah. The term that she invented, and you're from the East Coast, so I'm, I'm curious if you've heard this term, band mm. guy. A band guy is in like, hey, you got to meet my buddy. He's a band guy. You'll love him. Have you heard that term before? Band a guy. Band guy. Yes. Like a guy in a band. Exactly. Yeah. Have you heard that term before? Band guy. No. Okay. Never. Good. Because it doesn't exist. But she made it up. She made it up, and she and she and she does what? this academic, like treatise of the terms. Like, oh, so what is a band guy exactly? Well, it depends on whether you're a fan band or guy. whether you're in the band. And she goes on this long academic thing, and she goes, but here's why the term band guy is offensive in 2021. Uh, this this came out in December of, of 2021. Here's why th th yeah. this term is offensive in the 2020s, and because you know there are women and trans people and non-binary people who can be in a band as well. And it's like you invented a term, and then you have came up with a reason to be offended by that term. <laughs> Nobody has ever used well, that term. I don't get guy even like being a gendered word really right. anyway. Like like right. like an entire region of this country says you guys for yeah. a group of two or more right and then another region says y'all like yeah. like you or and then part of it says you all but like i've never and that, that's like a new thing like guy, like a lot of words they take on different meanings yes like look at the word gay gay right. meant happy yes and then it meant homosexual and then it meant lame right and now we can't say that anymore which i miss it's was when i, I grew up in the 90s well everything was yeah. gay if you watch yeah. the movie mid 90s other than most accurate things about it is that they everyone everything's gay and it's like yeah. i don't know you're not making fun of gay like homosexual right, right. people right, right it's just the word like words take on new meanings yeah yeah and yeah. sometimes they retain old meanings too and they can mean more than one thing that's why you need context for words but right right so hold on so this band guy thing so he's a band guy yeah well, no. Why, no why, you say, why you say it's an East Coast thing, though? Did she no, say no, that? I, no, no, no. So, so the reason why I, I asked you, because I thought maybe it's a regional thing, maybe, like, because I never heard in California growing up in the West Coast. I, I even looked it no. up on, on Urban Dictionary. I could not find it. It does not show up anywhere. So I was like, she made that term up. Yeah, 100%. Um, and and then she found a reason to be offended by it. <laughs> so like, <laughs> <laughs> I made this up, and now I'm mad about it. <laughs> but but so, so the, the, the article was largely reacting to the, the, the new Beatles documentary, get uh, get back, I think, or get out, or whatever, yeah, and, and and so out, she, right. and, and, and so she, and, and so she's just talking about like how Beatles, like the Beatles became like the, like the definitive band, and how like every band since then has followed the Beatles, and I don't, it was like it was like a weird academic, yeah, um, it was the fucking sixties, like yeah. there weren't as many, like, and I, I don't know, they were a phenomenon, like to be honest, I I I like the Beatles, and I respect the hell out of them, I'm not sure, crazy yeah. about the Beatles, or, I, don't, yeah. I don't know, yeah. but. Like they were, and this, this, to, to me, this article without reading it, which yeah. I, I, I don't need to, um, and I'll still give an opinion. Uh, yeah. this article is one of those, it, it's a straw man, is, is what it is. Yeah, it, it's first of all, bands aren't even like the popular. I don't get me wrong, my most of my favorite music is a lead guitarist, a bass, a drum, and a singer. Like, like yeah. those are most of my favorite, yeah. but that's not like <laughs> what's the popular music anymore like the, right, the right. like the super so it's like she's just finding that and, and the really popular music is very diverse yes. especially with women and, and and black like no one has had a bigger impact on musical culture than black americans i know no yeah. no single group in yeah. the world yeah. has had a bigger impact on worldwide music than black americans especially black right. americans in the south in the deep yeah. south and blues yeah. and jazz and new york city and the la like yeah that those are and motown and motown yeah. right in yeah. detroit so r&b pop like like the biggest stars and in, in, in yes. any of these genres are like black. So she, but because that doesn't fit her narrative she couldn't make she couldn't she couldn't it wouldn't pass the giggle test to say like you yeah. know the problem of pop is too white like no yeah. like what the <laughs> yeah no, like, like four white guys in a band like that's yeah. not even the popular shit anymore unfortunately right. unfortunately right. to me because that is a lot of my favorite music so yeah, yeah she, she straw made an article and you fell for it and then and, and she got more money because you clicked on it <laughs> i know and I that's know. why and that's why you have to break the wheel that's why i see uh, most of these things i don't click anymore 
Yeah. yeah. Even if Twitter said, even I'm going to write something sn- snarky about it in the yeah. retweet and Twitter says, are you sure when they're our first? No, <laughs> yeah. I don't because then they get those clicks and that's how they get money. Well, it's funny that that, 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 that Twitter has that thing of like, are you sure you want to tweet about this article before reading it? It's like, I don't know. Like, why don't you ask the writer if are you sure you want to publish this before you think? Like, Well, I told them. I, Twitter one time asked me, I'm like, I wrote the fucking thing. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. need to read it. <laughs> Um, like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it's it, this kind of reminds me of uh, she, she's doing that thing that again a lot of woke people do, where like they're unintentionally super racist. Um, yeah, so for example, like, favorite. yeah, I know it's hilarious, it's but, but they, 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 there's there's this thing where where, um, <laughs> where super woke people like they'll, they'll say that you know, math. <laughs> Math is purely a white invention. It's, it, it, you know, it, it, mathematics is, is a white supremacy tool. And it's like you're ignoring the contributions to math from like Mayans and Aztecs and Egyptians and Chinese and Middle Eastern uh, yeah, people. Ar- they're called fucking Arab numerals, you idiots. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, it's like Arabs had made like Arab, especially Arab Muslims made like right. astronomy and, and tons of math, yeah. like algebra and all that stuff. Right, I couldn't name many others. Right, right. <laughs> but which, when, when she says that, you know, like rock music is, is fundamentally white. It's like, did you look? Did you look at the fifties when we were actually genuinely less tolerant? It's like we had Little Richard, Ray Charles, yeah. Richie Valens. And it's like the earliest guys were 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 of color. Was so it like, Richie <laughs> Valens? Richie Valens. He's Mexican. White. Oh, he's Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Richard, Richard, wait, did he did he die in the plane crash with Buddy Holly? With Buddy Holly, yeah. Oh, he was he was Mexican. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he had to change that name though. Yeah, that's yeah, changed yeah. Right there. Yeah. that shows that's where the racism it's like yeah those guys couldn't eat and stay in the same hotel <laughs> yeah, but, but, they could, but they could make damn good music yeah yeah that but, the but, but it's, it, you know it, it, it's just their thing where it's just like i, I like i'm gonna ignore all of the, the the black and and female rockers uh over the course of 60 years and just focus on on like the beatles and be like oh yeah they're white supremacy um, but yeah, and also the other thing that, that I love about rock and roll music too is that like we'll have bands that are you know inclusive or of color. Or what I I don't know how to like talk about it without being pissed off, but like um and like people won't know because we just don't care. Like Kirk Hammett, the lead guitarist from Metallica, is Filipino. Nobody noticed because nobody gave a shit. They're 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 um they're Who bassist. Is, is he always the guitarist? Um, uh, from the first album, yeah, like he, uh, before he moves, Dave Mustaine who went on to start Megadeth afterwards. Um, but yeah, he, oh, from, from the first album, he's he, he, yeah, he's, yeah. he's been the guitarist. Um, and as well as the current bassist, uh, Robert Trujillo, he's half Mexican and half Native American. Yeah. But yeah. Again, nobody cares. Uh, because... What about what about Rage Against the Machine? What about yes. Kill Switch Engage? Yes. What about like... Soundgarden? Uh, the, the guitarist Soundgarden is Indian, but like, is it? Who gives a sh- yeah? Soundgarden is Indian. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Like, uh, see, you don't notice because you don't care. Fly, Flyleaf, they had like an Indian uh, guitarist, or, or maybe yeah. it was Pakistani or something. Yeah. Um, something not white. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's tons. Like, and, but yeah. it doesn't fit the narrative because exactly. I would love to see a, a statistic of if you put white or privilege or supreme, you put these in titles, it just yeah. people click on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> you're, you're the people i'm talking about <laughs> and they know i love that i love that meme it was like npr uh w- we need to get serious about talking about race it's like npr's articles uh you know discussing race and it's just like a shoot up in the like yeah. from like 2016 yeah. to now and like just going all the way uh it's like skyscraper heights for uh race it's, it's literally all they talk about right right uh why just, play the I, drinking I, game are you referring to, to the New York Times or, or, or was this different? Because, all of it. All of it. So, so, so I saw a bunch of graphs for specific words used. Maybe by it was the New York Times. Maybe it was the New York Times, and I. But, but it had a whole bunch of these buzzwords. It was like, di- like uh, yeah. how many times diversity has shown up in the New York Times? And it'd be like, oh, here's 1990, 95, 2000, 2012, 2015. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, inclusion. Blah, 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 and it's just like, mm-hmm. like 2015. Well, because it changed. Because it's changed from, and this yeah. isn't anything. Uh, this isn't anything people haven't you haven't heard before. But changed right. from a subscription based service to a click based service and yeah, so yeah. when you need the clicks you have to i mean if it bleeds it leads has always been the case right that's yeah. always like salacious things violent things have always sold and this is gone i don't mean just since like the 80s i mean going way oh, yeah. back oh, like, yellow journalism we have, that's we have always anyway. had we have always had a appetite for for this stuff yeah, um yeah. but uh in the in the click based economy, the online click based economy, you know, it's these buzzwords that yeah. it, it's not even it's a lot of it is hate clicking. A lot of it is yeah. uh, how can I make fun of this? It's like, well, and I do it too, right? Everyone yeah. does it. That it, it's yeah. really hard not to. That's pathetic, like, man. Oh, That's here's pathetic. This, here's you... this 
It's like, here's this, here's this <laughs> fucking city council and some progressive cities passing crazy shit. I can't use some word and I have to write something about it because th that's what people engage with with me, right? It's like, oh, Ben said a funny thing about this thing. It's kind of doing my own version of the seal clap, yeah. but I, I'm more clever with it and I'm better and whatever. Fuck you. You can do what I do. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's why. Yeah. Uh, Shanita O'Connor is uh, yeah. a muslim, muslim <laughs> now. she's also bald i think it's worth mentioning she was always bald though that's not a muslim thing yeah yeah right um it's I, think an Irish her, thing. I think one of her children just died though oh really yeah i think it was suicide um, oh yeah, that, bummer. yeah not cool that's terrible. Yeah. well we'll end on that note <laughs> <laughs> real quick real quick uh, no I'm just, about... i was just kidding was just um kidding. uh the killing Stanley oh yeah Cooper the killing, killing. yeah what'd you think it yeah uh it was cool it was yeah. it was uh kind of like a, a heist it was a heist movie yes, it was. and rodney dangerfield was in it wait well, yeah where i i forgot you said that and i didn't see him it's it, it was uh uh the, the scene where the guy towards the end of the movie where that guy's starting to fight at the bar like that was his job great there, yeah, yeah scene. maurice great yeah. scene that, just, yeah, that was crazy. choreography I mean, it's the 50s. Brawler. <laughs> yeah it's just like whack yeah. throw like throwing over his shoulders yeah, like yeah. the whack you can almost see the onomatopoeia is like kapow <laughs> <laughs> the big elongated punches shaboom yeah. it's really but it, it, was, scene, yeah. it was it was a good yes it was a, a good i i could barely understand what that actor was saying sometimes he had a very thick accent there's that and, actor and then and then and then the, the horse sniper actor he was good he, i liked he was, him but like what a was, crazy accent like it had that was fun thick, though New, yeah, yeah i love that was great um but that uh, was a fun that was i liked him a lot i loved uh i think it was george who was kind of the cuck like yes. the guy whose wife um he had really great facial expressions like really great yeah. kind of facial acting his eye and i think that's part of the shots really accentuated his eyes yeah. and i noticed that like those are some of the best or those are some of my favorite scenes and yeah. then the ending holy shit that ending is yeah. Yeah. is fantastic yeah. Uh, I mean, I can spoil it. It's from 1956 or something, yeah. right? Yeah. It's been out for over 70 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like the the money is going to the all the money's in a suitcase. It kind of drove me crazy that I didn't organize it better. That was like my OCD. It's like <laughs> yeah. just just take a fucking minute and like organize it, and it yeah. Yeah. might actually work out. And it's on the, the cart to be put into um, what, what's luggage with the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll check the overhead check the overhead compartment. Well, no, not an overhead. That's what he wanted. It's not yeah, going yeah, in overhead. Right. It's going in the undercarriage or whatever. Right, right. Uh, and it just gets, you know, he the guy takes a turn to, it was so, like, it was jarring. Like, yeah, dollar for yeah. the jarring jar. Like, it was jarring. And then the money's going everywhere. And his look is just like, holy shit. Yeah, and yeah. I really liked that. I, I, yeah. It was not what I was expecting. I guess yeah. I was thinking like a 50s movie. I thought it was going to be like the... You know, he's getting away and he's got a cigarette and like a hot stewardess walks by with a drink. And it's like, he says some snappy line to end the movie. And it's like yeah. totally different. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool. It, yeah. was, it, was, it, was, it was a good movie. Yeah. It I mean, was a big influence on Tarantino. Um, yeah. Because it's uh, the heist movie. And, um, you know, it involves like these completely different characters. And every character is a sleaze bag. Like there's nobody who's really like. Yeah. Know, and that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of, that was very. Was that like unique back then to like not I, have a hero and just as have far as like I a know, bunch, I mean, of, bunch of pieces of shit? Yeah. Um, and then also like it, there was non-linear storytelling. Like there was like, oh, like we're going to play this scene, but from a different angle. We're going to follow this character's yeah. story. And that was very Tarantino, or I should say I, Tarantino's very Stanley uh, Kubrick-esque in that regard. I wish I wish it was a little longer, to be honest. Like, yeah, I would have yeah. liked to meet these characters more. You know, a bunch of them get wiped out in one scene, which was kind of cool. Again, like a a, a, a jarring yeah. moment. Uh, I would have. I don't know. I would have liked because you kind of got to know George and the main guy. I, I don't remember his name. Yeah. Um, like the, the ringleader. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's really. It. I feel like you 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 seem on their own a little of a little of the bartender too a little yeah, of the bartender yeah. too with his um knowing wife yeah but uh very yeah very cool movie yeah very cool yeah. i would say i mean kubrick's the fucking master if i had to pick oh, yeah. one one director he's probably my number one like yeah. if it's like 
just the over of of any one director, I think I'm going with Kubrick. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. What about you? Who are you going with? Um, probably Hitchcock. I think, yeah. I think Kubrick's. I know you like I Hitchcock. Kubrick, yeah. Yeah, but Kubrick, Kubrick's probably like my number two though. Kubrick, he's got like Hitchcock. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously he's incredible, but Kubrick has so much diversity in his in his subject matter. I mean, Full yeah. Metal Jacket, Space Odyssey, uh, 2001: yeah. Space Odyssey. Um, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. <laughs> oh, oh, Clockwork Orange is probably my favorite. Lolita, yeah, Orange, Spartacus. Lolita, Spartacus. Um, no. I mean, I didn't love Eyes Wide Shut. I think that sucks that was his last movie, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, he, he's the fucking man. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, God damn it! God damn it! Shining, Shining. Yeah, yeah. I love every movie is completely different from the last one. You're wrong. One. Go with Kubrick. Why aren't you? <laughs> that, that's what I'm trying to convince you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see to you that Kubrick is better than Hitchcock if you'll agree that um, no, Event Horizon. No, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to have Silver Lake. Dude, I'm not, I, can't, I don't want to talk about this movie anymore. It's a bad movie. Wait, what? It's not Event, a good movie. Wait, what? Event Horizon? Event Horizon? I don't know. I think if you watch it like three or four more times, I think you'll you'll. I would uh, never watch that movie again in my entire life. All right. Well, this is Ben's last unless episode. You, unless you, <laughs> we will literally have to put the Clockwork Orange eye uh, eye restraints, like yeah, yeah. for me to watch that movie again. I have some here, so next time you visit, we'll do. <laughs> <I> have those. <laughs> All right. Oh man, is that should we wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. I'm getting sick of this Copper conversation. Up. And um... <laughs> yeah, you pissed me on stuff. Too. We're done. We're, we're, we're breaking, the band's breaking up. I'm pretty All angry. Right. So fight the crits. <laughs> fight, fight the crits, please. Will you fight yeah. the crits and stop clicking on their articles? I guess you kind of have to read them to fight them, but you fight the crits. I'm gonna take the day off. Okay. All right. I'll I'll I'll, I'll wave your flag for you, um, right. and I'll put it I'll put it down for you. Whatever. Right. And listen to some listen to some six nine. He he just yells at you and says, "Oh." And we're gonna sign off now. Um, he every other word he says is the N word, and it is he is not black. He is not a black. <laughs> he's not black at all. I don't know where he got the pet the, the the card. Yeah, he, he got a he got a pass card for that. I mean, uh, the lyrics is obviously I didn't pick a stanza tree there, yeah. but of his lyrics. But every other word, it's a soft day N word, but he, he's saying it. Yeah, so, good for him. Uh, well. <laughs> good for him. But now they all want to kill him because he read it. Uh, what are you going to do? Government, man. All yeah. right, stay reckless, Jeff. All right, stay reckless, bad.